I've seen a lot of things playing out on this internet, from dysfunction to plum right craziness. And when it became apparent to me why I didn't believe any of these allegations that have been geared at Robert Kelly, it should be very obvious the points I made early on in my content, which you can go back and check out. Clearly, money was the motivation driving a lot of these individuals in railroading this man. And the most common sense objections that I had as a person viewing all of this bullshit on the Internet was, why didn't any of these individuals go to the police? Why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? And when you couldn't get simple answers to those questions... And it became very obvious all of these people telling these stories about Robert Kelly are trying to gain something one way or another from him is the hypocrisy that I have with this whole mute R. Kelly that was birthed out of these false allegations that were driven by sketchy ass individuals who wouldn't even testify in court and the ones that did weren't even credible. Yet as I mentioned this pattern throughout the entire history of how these artists across the board have been complaining about the same things and how certain individuals go out their way to discredit these people, tarnish their brands, and make them look crazy. The general public doesn't stop and look at the picture I've been painting when it comes to the topic at hand. Now, as I watch people's reactions to this Jeffrey Dahmer movie, and though it has been rehashed over and over, I'm very flabbergasted at the approach that some people wanted to take when they said people should boycott the movie, when in fact, people don't want to face the facts and how Hollyweird likes to glorify these devious and strange-ass characters for their movies and other things they like to perpetuate meanwhile they'll villainize and demonize other individuals for profit stay tuned as i make this video make sense because each and every time i've thought about how i wanted to relay this message i get infuriated watching the hypocrisy within it all Can I hear with you? What? ACP, hey, do you see this? Look, if it ain't official Dana J, Levi for Kelly, Prima Donna News, I don't even want to see it. Voices fell on deaf ears. Tonight, Glenda Cleveland relives the frustration of being shut out by a police operator as she insisted the person being beaten was a child. When I say what I have to say and I know it to be true, I don't feel that I have to constantly keep repeating myself. And I think that can be said for everyone. Glenda Cleveland remembers the day Connor Rack died, remembers the police assurances that everything was okay. Did you start to doubt yourself? I must admit I did. I did. But do you feel they let that boy down that night? Yes, they did. Yes. Yes, he was definitely let down. He was let down as low as he could get. That was to his grave. You can't get much lower than that. Now, it should be blatantly obvious how Netflix fictionalized this true story. But what I find offensive is how they tried to portray some of these victims living certain lifestyles instead of putting the truth that this man would even go to the malls recruiting individuals with these attempts to take their photos. Yet, as I previously mentioned, Holly Weir likes to glorify these type of tragedies. And then when we see the these copycats start to emerge during times like Halloween, it should be a no-brainer as to why I side-eye all the hypocrisy that people overlook. Now, clearly, if you watch this movie, you might think that everything they presented, considering this is supposed to be a true story, is actual facts. But then if you know the story and if you do a little research, you will notice how they even merge two different characters in order to give this dramatic effect. 
Now, quite frankly, I believe this cancel culture is the reason why people are so delusional and can't face reality. Now, clearly, I believe that if these people are going to continue to portray these stories and have an effect on these families, these families should get the proceeds for all of these productions instead of trying to stir the public into boycotting and protesting shit that we know ain't going to change Consider. If you watch this movie, these people had ample opportunities to capture this man. Even when he assaulted a 13 year old boy, the damn judge wants to give him a slap on the wrist and conceal his crime so that it doesn't affect his life. But let's take this on the flip side and how when it comes to other individuals, we want to make them Satan. We want to manipulate the laws to enhance sentencing upon individuals that we decide to target. Somebody make this shit make sense. Allegedly, the same individual years prior was drugging and assaulting people in the army. Now, instead of being accountable for the accusations that emerged then, they gave him a dishonorable discharge. That means he can still get benefits, right? Yet this has been my major emphasis within my content and how certain individuals get a slap on the wrist when it comes to the judicial system, even though they know they're guilty as hell. But when it comes to other individuals, we have to make them look like the scum on the earth, especially if they're in possession of certain assets that we want to recover. The most appalling part in all of this, again, is not only that he got away with assaulting this 13-year-old, but that obviously he had minor children as his victims, one in which a woman tried to intervene and help, yet the police delivered this individual right back to this man for his demise. Make this shit make sense. Now, clearly, a lot of people focus in on the victims that he actually took out of here. But a lot of people skip past the victims that he traumatized in finding them, drugging them, abusing them. And who knows what happens to them? Yet my mouth hit the floor as I watched other people try to sympathize with this monster, sit up here and try to justify his abandonment issues, talk about how his family didn't spend time with him. And they forget it's so many brown skinned Americans that have that same fate. And a lot of it is not at their own fault. A lot of it is the systematic dysfunctional cycle that we see going on and on when when it comes in black communities, single parent households. Yet I guarantee you if somebody brown goes and commits these crimes, there ain't going to be no sympathy parties. There ain't going to be no people trying to figure out why he did this. They're just going to call him a monster and try to push the death penalty. And if this man was going to his high school and these people knew they couldn't get in contact with his parents and nobody pushed child services like they would quickly do with brown skinned kids, y'all gonna have to miss me with the sympathy party of him and his abandonment issues. Now, I can go on and on about this topic at hand because the negligence of the police officers is another point that I bring forth in my content because clearly when it comes to any victims, you should report your allegations to police officials. And if these new age victims of today decide we're going to skip that process, what is the general public supposed to do with them when we reflect on cases like this when ample people try to warn the police about this serial killer and they did nothing. When Apple police went in this man's house and I know damn well they know the smell of decomposition but ignored it. All the complaints they ignored. All the missing people in the area that went pushed to the side until their body came up and the major emphasis that a lot of people won't acknowledge. The obvious Satanism that we see projected. The same way we see it displayed in Hollywood. The same way we see these type of crimes glorified and put in these drama series and movies. But yet, let's think about this logically. 
if each and every time these Hollywood producers and movers and shakers decide they want to put out these productions and put out these stories about this particular individual and considering that we know that some of these families sued other individuals, why is it far-fetched to push that every time they come out with this shit, attack the profits? Then maybe they simmer down on all of these productions. Kind of like when I made the suggestion that when these people came out talking about Mute R. Kelly and decided to run to the record labels that they say were enabling this type of behavior that they alleged he exhibited, that was backwards as hell to me considering why not get all these accusers and sue these corporations instead of targeting and attacking one individual and expecting the whole world to believe he's this criminal enterprise controlling all these people, but none of them are going to be penalized. Make this shit make sense. The justification that they have because he did this and he did that in the past. And because they don't have the sufficient evidence, we're going to dish out all these immunity deals in order for these janky ass people to corroborate their stories in order for us to get this conviction. And the general public shouldn't say nothing because even though we believe that he did this and he did that, Nobody should challenge the government to stand on principles and prove their cases. Now the point, clearly the judicial system has a long-standing history of not being about justice. So why is it far-fetched for individuals such as myself who know how all of these cases that were piled on against Robert Kelly came to be decide to question everything that has been put on these platforms considering we know that when it comes to open cases open investigations it's just certain things that shouldn't come into play especially when it comes to evidence being splattered all over social media Yet if you review my content, you will come to find this is exactly why I stand with Robert Kelly, because everything that they did to try to prove his guilt only showed the world the levels they were willing to do to railroad this man and fail to give him his due process in the court of law. But hold on, let me guess. We're supposed to keep believing that all these residents in Chicago knew all this stuff about Robert Kelly. They didn't make no reports. They didn't make no scenes. Everybody just kept stepping in the name of love, doing their two steps. But 20 years down the line, we supposed to believe he's such a monster, even though they admit out their mouth this man was operating within the law. Question was whether or not these women were over age. And once um, it was determined that they were of age when they met him, we faced a host of issues. And so, like Tim said, three years ago when they came in my office, uh, after he called me, you know, I first started to strategize, how can I help? Because legally there weren't too many options. Um, But we had to do was destroy the narrative that's been surrounding this individual and many cases like this, that these are women that no one cares for that these are women that no one will fight for. And so we took a um, outside the box approach and we started to destroy the narrative. We had to convince men and women across the country to believe what was going on. Y'all killing me with this I gave you 30 years of my career. Robert. 30 years of my career. Something good.